Julius Randle gave the Knicks fans a thumbs down gesture. And when asked about it, he said it meant shut the F up. Now, I'll go first because I'm a Knicks fan. And ironically, I'm wearing a Mets jersey. And the Mets got into this kind of little dilemma earlier in the season when Baez gave fans a thumbs down as well. So I'll great talk job, about well. who? Great job. I'm oh, saying great job. Great for knowing Baez? Come on, Absolutely. bro. I'm a, I'm a Mets Absolutely. fan. What, come on, man. What are, you <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> All right. My bad. So. Bro. Um, what I think about this, you know, Julius Randle apologized for it. He said he regretted it, but I don't think he needed to apologize for it. I, I think New York fans have a tendency to do this with our star players. I mean, we the Knicks fans especially, but we see with the Nets. I mean, Nets fans right now are getting on Harden's case, and they're talking a lot of smack about Harden right now. When Carmelo Anthony, I, I know that people say this was said about Patrick Ewing and other former stars, but I was alive and I was present for the Carmelo Anthony era in New York and when Carmelo was here in New York when our starting lineup was Jose Calderon, Aaron Aflalo, Porzingis and Robin Lopez Carmelo was the one getting blamed every single night it wasn't Phil Jackson it wasn't our roster construction it was Carmelo oh stop jocking pass the ball all this and all that and Carmelo wasn't the most efficient but he was far from the problem in New York And Julius Randle, this year he's averaging 19.6 points per game, 10 rebounds, 4.9 assists, but his efficiency is is extremely, is lowered from last year. Last year he won most improved player. If there was an award for most regressed player, Julius Randle might be a runner-up right now. That's how bad he's been. And I'm not excusing his play, but us Knicks fans have to realize that he, even though he has been worse for us, He is not the main culprit of why we are not a good team. Fournier has been extremely disappointing, and it seems like he only shows up against Boston. R.J. Barrett has been such a disappointment to to the point that I'm out on him. And and listen, Riv, earlier in the show, you wanted to talk smack about R.J. That's reserved for me, buddy. I'm the only one that could do this on can do that on the show because I'm the R.J. Barrett guy. So I don't want to hear a peep out of you. From about R.J. Barrett. I don't want you to talk smack about him. That's for me to do, man. I don't want you to say nothing about R.J. Barrett. Our team is just not very good. And Julius Randle deserves a lot of... He de- he deserves to get held accountable for his poor play. And for some reason, he only performs in primetime games and in games that aren't nationally televised. He, he lays an egg on Christmas... He had 24 and 12. Then the next two games he played versus the Timberwolves and then the Pistons. And I'm trying to look at how much points he had. He had right there. The next two games he played against the Pistons and the Timberwolves. And he had 13 points and then five points. And those were non nationally televised games. I mean, for some reason, Randall just doesn't show up. The energy isn't there, but he is far from the main problem because we saw when Randall got COVID, We were 0-2. Everybody wanted R.J. Barrett to have the keys. We barely beat OKC. O.B. Toppin gets his first start. Knicks fans have been begging for O.B. to get minutes over Randall. O.B. gets his first start, and in 20-plus minutes versus the Pistons and Thunder, he had 9 points, then 5 points. So even when he got his opportunity, he didn't make the most of it. Yet all we want to do is blame Randall. The Knicks are 4-5 and five when Randall scores 24-plus points this season. We're 4-4 four and four when he scores 30-plus. So even when Randall is balling at an all-NBA level, we still lose games. We're still an average team. So the team's problems are far from Randall. He is one of the reasons why we aren't as good as we are. But I think he does deserve some slack. And the thumbs down gesture was bad on his part because he has to understand that's just how fans are. I mean, even when we get negative comments on our videos, we don't go responding to everybody, but, or even to anybody, but Julius Randle is probably just so fed up with the New York market because every other day he has to hear about RJ Barrett getting less opportunities because of him, even though RJ Barrett, it's quite obvious. He's not a number one option and he just, he keeps on getting blamed because he is the face of the franchise right now. And I think he just got fed up. I don't think he should have apologized for it, but it happened with Melo and it's going to happen with Randall. He just has to play better. Man, 
that four year take looks so sweet for me. Oh man, you know, that take <laughs> just looks. Oh, it looks so sweet for me. Not oh. really, because yeah, but, you because you talked really? you, you you said that he wasn't an upgrade over Reggie Bullock. Reggie Bullock's not doing anything for Dallas, bro. No, but I'm speaking for the Knicks. When Reggie was there, y'all made the playoffs strong, strong. This year you're struggling. That Kemba take, whoo, that's another one for me. I just ah, hit that on the net. Listen, I keep trying to tell you RJ is a grown man that can't go right. You just refuse to listen to me. It's not but, that he can't go right. He just can't create a yeah, shot. He can't create yeah, off the yeah, dribble. Yeah, That's yeah, really yeah, the main problem. Yeah, yeah, so you have to okay. stop talking about like you know everything about RJ. Yeah, he's when one you're of not, the worst you know players about RJ. Out of Honest to God, he's one of the worst. You look at D'Lo. You look at Ben Simmons. He's RJ is at the bottom of the barrel right now. But that's neither here nor there. He's young. He has a lot of potential. Cool. Julius Randle's comments were justified. And it, it was on. It was out of frustration. You know, he's frustrated. This fan base has turned on him. Every other day is something new. And I think you know, last year what he did was, it was extremely impressive. You know, making an All NBA team, averaging what north of twenty two points a game, twenty four, ten, and Thank six. You. Thank you, twenty four, ten, and six. That's incredible number. Forty percent from you three. Know. Oh, talk about it. Look, listen, talk about it. Forty percent from three. He had a, he had an amazing year last year. He deserved All NBA. He willed that Knicks team to the playoffs. You know, granted they got smoked out by the Hawks. He didn't play good. But nonetheless, he got them there. He put them back on the map. And I think New York Knicks fans, they have a short attention span. You know, they 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 forget things pretty fast, too. They don't care about what you did last year. This is a fan base that's starving. It's been starving. It wants to see consistent success. And when their team is struggling right now, you know, New York fans are hard. They're going to come for you. They're going to talk bad. And, you know, it's. It's weird because a lot of the things they're saying RJ Bears struggles are because of Julius Randle. I don't think that's true. I just think RJ hasn't made the proper ad- adjustments or have made the proper improvements in his game. But Randle hasn't also lived up to the hype. You know, he hasn't lived up to last year. He's looked like a fluke. You know, he doesn't look like the same player. He's regressed in a lot of areas. And I think the beauty of it is you guys didn't give him a max. You know, that was the beauty of it. You guys didn't pay him the full amount of money. You know, you guys still have a good team, like in terms of pieces around. But it's it's just the the problem is bigger than Randall. And I wish New York fans would see that because a lot of it is not. Obviously, Randall's going to get the slack. He's the star player. He's the leader of the team. He's your all NBA guy. So he's going to forever get the slack. But like you said, look at Fournier. You look at Obi Toppin. You look at Tom Thibodeau as a coach. You know, you look at Kemba Walker, you look at the front office, what have they done this year to make the, I feel like the front office is the only place that's done their job this year. They've tried to put the pieces around just RJ Baird. You look at him and his improvements. I mean, the only bright spots it looks like is a man you quickly most of the time. He looks like at all times, he's a hot flame. He can get hot. You look at Mitch Robinson. What, why haven't you improved? What's been your struggles? You look at Obi Top. I mean, the rookies that you've got, they're really good rookies and you got them late in the draft and those are impressive. Quentin Grimes and Deuce Deuce, those are good picks. Those are good players. They're going to be good for you guys in the long run. But in a sense, I think Julius Randle, to bring it all around, Julius Randle comments were justified because obviously coming back in that game down big, you know, making that comeback, making that roar. And, you know, he didn't want to hear it from the fans because they were booing. They weren't on their side, you know, as a, as a team. And I can speak to this because my Bulls have been down a lot. Our fan base doesn't give up. We still cheer, you know, because there's never you, you're not supposed to give up on your players and they still cheer. You get the team going and that's what gets us back to those wins. That's what brings us back. And for Knicks, you know, they see their team go down and they just start booing. Team sucks. So I think a lot of that was just frustration for Randall, but it was justified. This topic I kind of struggle with. Because. As professional athletes, there's things that you sign up for when you get a contract. And I'm going to sound like such an old head, but I feel pretty firm on this. You look at history and New York sports. We all can agree the most brutal fans in sports there are are New York fans, without a doubt. The fact that Derek Jeter got booed in Yankee Stadium, the fact that Mariano Rivera got booed in Yankee Stadium. I know you guys aren't baseball heads. But for anyone that watches and understands or knows anything we know, we about know Derek Yankees, Jeter, though. you know, know Derek that. Jeter, you know, Mariano Rivera, there is no one exempt from being booed if you play in New York. That being said, Julius Randle has not been what everyone had been expecting Julius Randle to be this season. And Julius Randle has, to a degree, been disappointing Knicks fans. Now, Julius Randle responded in the right way in the sense of the way he played down the stretch. 
he did not respond in the correct way and putting the thumbs down gesture. And even if he, he just did the thumbs down gesture and didn't even speak about anything of what he meant internally, the fact that he came out and said that it meant shut the F up was completely un. I don't want to say unbelievable, but I, I, it was just unnecessary. You understand as a player, fans are very cutthroat. They love you when you're great. They hate you when you're not. But the way to keep fans on your side are by being consistent. Steph Curry has been playing not to Steph Curry standards. But the reason why he gets a pass is because he's shown a level of consistency for years and years and years. Julius Randle just broke onto the scene for the Knicks and has been was great for them last year. And this season, he's shooting less field goal percentage, a less three-point percentage, a less efficient field goal percentage, less points per game. What more do you need or what are what really are you, do you want the Knicks fans to do? You guys as a whole have been disappointing the entirety, not just Julius Randle, but as a whole, the Knicks have been disappointing. And it's not, and it's not, I'm not saying it's solely because of Julius Randle, but he's definitely one of the reasons why the Knicks are not as good as people had projected them to be coming into this season or not as good as they were last season. I look at it like this. Giancarlo Stanton is the epitome of New York fans in this modern era booing someone to death. Giancarlo needed to prove it that he was a real New York Yankee. He got booed more than I've heard any other Yankee get booed. This season had one of his best years, and now New York fans love him. There is no one outside of maybe Aaron Judge that fans look at and say, we love and embrace this dude. But it's a matter of overcoming adversity. I understand we live in an era where mental health is out of at the forefront, and I firmly am okay with that. But this is a little bit different in my in my opinion, where it's fans being fans. They want the team to be successful, and if you're not producing for them, they're gonna let you know. Oof. I mean, honestly, to be honest, I love it. I, I love that Julius Randle did that though, because Knicks fans are some of the most, and they're just some of the most toxic fans out. They're extremely toxic. And and to everybody's point, you know what you sign up for when you play in New York. I mean, James Harden, who's had a career just head and shoulders above Julius Randle. James Harden, who came back on a grade two hamstring in the postseason to give us a chance to, you know, win against the Milwaukee Bucks, got booed because he was playing bad. And I didn't think the boos were warranted for Harden. And I don't think the boos per se are warranted for Julius Randle in the sense that uh, all these other additions to their team haven't really held their own weight along with Julius Randle. I mean, RJ Barrett to Joel's credit, he's right. He's regressed. I've seen enough games to know that this year, RJ Barrett's averaging a career low across the board. Evan Fournier has been a disappointment. Uh, Mitchell Robinson, another guy, he always struggles with foul issues. I always see that guy found out the game. And it's just like it's it, it it's a it's a it's a bad environment because Knicks fans tend to forget that Julius Randle had you guys as as the man as the fourth seed last year, albeit he didn't play well against Atlanta, but that was the most successful season that you had since that season that you made I believe the second seed with Carmelo Anthony, and he made an All NBA team and and he put on that season, and you know I mean New New York fans are going to be New York fans like you know James Harden. Example, better player, got booed. Julius Randle, I mean, he's embraced that that Knicks culture. He's 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 given the Knicks, well, we thought he was giving the Knicks something to be, you know, cheerful for or whatever. Obviously, it hasn't happened this year. But, I mean, like Joel said, all the problems that the Knicks have don't really rely just on Julius Randle. It's players across the board that have taken, that, that have regressed. Even Tom Thibodeau, somebody who I was fond of, pulling Kemba, out the, Kemba Walker out the lineup, and all these other things, just creating all these ex- internal, external problems with the Knicks. I mean, it's all just, it's just, it's not, it's not meshing well right now. And to, for you guys to boo Julius Randle, I get he's your best player, but for you guys to boo the, the man that made the all NBA second team and put on an, a, a, a basically a historic Knicks season last year, I, don't, I that just doesn't sit right with me. And I like that in, in great fashion, he finished that game out. They came back, they won. And in great fashion, he told them like, yo, if y'all not going to be with me now, after all that I've done last year and, and, and you're just going to boo me like that. You're going to forget the type of success that we had last year. Then I don't want, I don't want your roars. So, I mean, hopefully, you know, 
Julius Randle, the Knicks can turn this around. They have been playing slightly better. But, um, yeah, I'm, I'm with Julius Randle. I like it. You know, New York fans like to tend to dish out a lot of, like, I don't want to say hate, but they tend to, to speak their mind. And I don't have a problem with an athlete saying, like, yo, you guys want to talk about me and my game and everything? I'm going to talk about you guys and tell you to shut up as fans. Even playing field for me, to you be just honest. Need a, you need a different type of mentality when you go to the, you go to New York. You know, the garden Crazy. is just a different beast. Crazy. Like, the play in New York, you got to have that tough skin that rugged mindset, like the mentality just got to be different because New York, first of all, it's the Big Apple. It's one of the best cities in the world. You know what I'm saying? It's the top three biggest city in America, probably top two. Like that in L.A., like those are the city. Like you got to just have a different type of skin to you. And then Randall, he learning that firsthand. Like this is real. Like New York fans don't play. Like, yeah, it's true. But Bing Randall should have Randall, Randall Randall already felt it though. His first year in New York, you felt yeah, that. His first year, it, it's the same as this year. The first, oh my god, the first. I used to work with a bunch of Knicks fans, and and they were ripping Randall the first year, saying that he's terrible. He oh sucked, yeah, he sucked for stuff. sure. And then the next year, when he plays an All NBA season, like yo man, I was so. He's wrong seen the ups and downs of it. And now they're back on the chain, like, yo, Randall was never that guy, like, they wasn't cheering for him last year. Just well, Randall does shit. have to play better, though. I mean, it's just... He definitely does. It's, he definitely you does. know, you're dropping from 24 to 19. It's, it, it, that's a disgrace. I think that's a disgrace. You go from 40% <laughs> three-point... You go from a 40% three-point shooter to 32%. Like... They just aren't good. What 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 is that? You know, so... Randall does have to play better. I do like that he clapped back at fans, because sometimes fans are a little bit too loud and obnoxious. And... Being at, you know, being at sporting events, I like it sometimes, but then sometimes I am around some really obnoxious fans and it, it makes me really reevaluate how these guys think because it, it, it the way some fans think is actually pretty disgusting. <laughs> like there's definitely some fans that are over the top. I 100% agree with you. But the normal fan, like me, I was one of those guys that when Giancarlo came up to bat and he struck out, I was booing him because I wanted more from him. We're giving this guy top dollar. The Knicks are giving this guy, Julius Randle, top dollar. They didn't pay him. They didn't, a, pay him. they didn't pay him. They did, didn't give they, him a contract. They, they did just pay him. He they, just, they, he they, just signed. They, they, they didn't extend him. They, no, we did. Extended. Yeah, not they a max, though. Him. It wasn't a max. max. No, not a oh, max. Yeah, they, He's yeah, getting paid $28 million. Like, that's still a, a lot of money and easily the most on the Knicks roster by any player, r- without a doubt. My point being... As the best player on the team, there's a certain responsibility on your back. And if you can't handle that, then then that's on you. You need to adjust to the game. There's so many aspects to NBA, to professional sports, and that's one of them. And and it takes a certain mental toughness to, to overcome it, particularly in New York. And I definitely understand that. But in the sense of not being able to tolerate it and responding back, that's where I have an issue. 